Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to Humanitarian Chronicles, where I highlight extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. We are here on this glorious day with Gabriel Logan Braun, intuitive, heart-centered healer, inspired visionary, and transformational life coach. Gabriel is truly one of the most open, genuinely loving, warm spirits I have ever encountered. I am so honored to know him personally. Gabriel uses healing sounds to cut through all of the noise of this crazy modern world so that our bodies can recharge, our minds can relax, and our nervous systems can return to homeostasis. His musical compositions are deeply soulful, cut straight to the heart. They make me cry every time I hear him sing. And I'm so happy to feature this angel here today because Gabriel, with his deeply caring soul, pure heart, life coaching, and sound healing expertise, helped me personally crawl out of the darkest pit of hell that I was in with the worst broken heart of my life many years ago. He didgeridid something to me and I started my, my healing process and it is just my deep honor and privilege to welcome Gabriel to the show. Thank you so much, Angel, for being here. I'm so grateful to have you. So good to be here with you, Abby. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome and of course, as you can see, Gabriel is ready to open the show with some of his original lyrics and melodies and his original composition. So I am so excited to hear what you have to play. And let's kick it off that way so you can see exactly what I'm talking about with this talented, amazing being. Still alone, still at home, 
babe, that was so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Is that a new one? I haven't heard that one. It's brand new, being recorded right now. Oh my gosh, we're so honored. Not only is this a Skype interview with the world-renowned Gabriel Logan Braun, sound healer, inspired visionary, beautiful being, it is the first release of the new song. I am so happy. That is so beautiful, I love it. Oh honey, thank you so much. So as you can see, and that's not even when you have a broken heart and Gabriel has you on his massage table and is blowing the didgeridoo all over your body to realign you and help you heal and, and being the most caring, loving, beautiful soul when you need it most. That is his music. You can only imagine what it feels like to have his beautiful energy helping you through a crisis. I mean, that was so beautiful. Thank you. I'm trying not to smear my makeup. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you so much. So, yes, I, I'd love to talk with you about why sound is so powerful. How did you get into this, and how did you figure this all out? Great. Thank you. So, it started when I was in high school, and I was basically in a really challenging place and feeling really disillusioned with my situation with life, with following um, kind of the system or what I was supposed to do and losing um, interest very quickly and just really disconnecting and detaching from the world around me. And um, during that time, I was in and out of you know depressed states and um, a family friend introduced me to yoga and I went to my first class and it happened to be Govindas and Radha Rosen, um, who have an incredible um, studio and home base in Santa Monica, California. And I remember going into their class, being like, what's this yoga thing? And they're saying these funny words. I'm like, what is this? Um, but after sweating and moving and stretching, I kind of like let all that, you know, that chatter go. And, um, and then when we laid down at the very end, in resting pose, Shavasana is what it's called. Um, Radha and Govinda began to play the most beautiful music, and it just transported me to a different place. And I, I literally forgot about all my problems and how depressed I was. And um, that was really what began the journey. And I, and I got up after class, and I spoke to Radha, who at the time was playing the flute, and I asked, um, "How can I?" to play and, and essentially that's how it all started for me um, seeing that music is can be used for more for, for healing for helping us connect deeper to ourselves so that that began what is now about you know 12 year journey of sound breath work yoga meditation different healing arts um, music and uh, to to be, be to come to where I am now with with what I uh, am able to share with, with. Wow, honey! Thank God for Govindas and Radha. It's so amazing because that's where I first encountered you. I first saw, found you when I was in the pit of the deepest, darkest night of the soul, laying on my yoga mat, crying like I did at every yoga class and just in every waking moment during that period of my life. And I experienced you playing live music in one of our yoga classes. And I went up to you afterwards and I was like, can you help me? I'm dying. And you're like, yes, I can. I do sound healing. I'm like, what? let me set up an appointment. So that is why you're here. That is why I want the world to know about you. I'm so glad that you went into that class and found yourself that way and honey yes when we're called we're called you are absolutely called to be doing what you're doing I'll tell you that so you say life is a vibration retune yourself I love that because I study a lot of holy books um, specifically the Torah because that, that is my background and in the Torah it actually says that every name of every animal and every celestial orb has a name because that's the vibration at which it vibrates. So like a Kelev is a dog 
And that word kelev is actually that dog's hum. It's actually that dog's vibration. So isn't that amazing? Yeah. Like, let's grope out there for the meta beyond physics, baby. What's up? But no, I love that, that you've tapped into that ancient wisdom and you use sound to heal because as we know, it can be healing or destructive. So yeah, could you talk to us a little bit about what exactly sound healing is and what it does to our bodies? Great, yeah. Um, well, sound healing, depending on who you ask, you'll get a lot of different definitions or um, explanations about it. Yeah. And um, I think the first thing I'll say is, you know, even using the term sound healer, I use it because it's what people know, just like you call someone a yogi or yogini. Um, and at the same time, each and every one of us, we are, we are our own healers. So it's just like when you reached out to me, I was assisting and guiding you back into yourself. And ultimately, you know, you did the healing and you did the healing work. And, and so in that way, I, I feel the same about sound healing is that, you know, a sound healer or musician who is able to bring in that healing quality to his or her music has a way of um, bringing a, a specific intention of healing, of, of um, creating a certain state of well-being, and then putting that into whatever the instrument happens to be. For me, my main instrument is my voice, um, and I you know, also play crystal bowls and the didgeridoo and an assortment of different instruments. So whatever instrument that is, and then when that vibration goes out, it's like the person themselves is the extension of... Um, the instrument so that it just ripples out like you know when you drop a little pebble in water you can see in the water the ripples um, and how that affects everything in its surroundings so that's one way of looking at it now the kind of scientific um, background I guess you could say behind sound healing is that well sound is vibration right and the universe from a quantum physics perspective everything is vibrating from the you know Biggest thing to the smallest little tiny cell or molecule or, or atom, right? So in that way, sound is a very powerful way in which we express vibration. Mm -hmm. And as um, you know, I've, I, I've said before in, in videos and things that I've done, which is like, don't just listen or don't just hear, hear listen. And listen not with just with your physical ears, but with your whole body. So when you experience sound as vibration, you can actually feel it in different parts of your body. And depending on what pitch, what tone, what frequency the sound is in, there are even certain emotions that get dissolved or canceled out if you meet it with a certain frequency or you match it with that tone, with that sound. And even science is showing now that, um, for example, with ultrasound, small kidney stones can actually be dissolved by matching it with a similar or the same frequency or, um, of sound and wow. some of these sounds are even inaudible you can't even hear them with the human ear um, so, so really just to you know bring it all together I think sound healing is a way in which we have access to you know this powerful and also palpable tangible tool that we can receive from those around us um, who have a healing intention and we can also give to ourselves because guess what like I said, we're each our own healer, and we have something called a voice, right? So when we learn how to use it towards ourselves and each other, we can actually create the, that those positive healing effects. Um, and on the on the flip side, if you look at how sound can be used to destroy or to be to made toxic, you know, um, just think about how sometimes if if we're really angry or we're in a state of reaction and we we shout at that person, we yell with, and we're, you know, with all of that, almost like venom in our, in our being, um, that that person feels it, you know, and we've all been there before. I mean, I know I have. Well, and I can't imagine. I can't imagine. You're like the most loving person I know. <laughs> I, I, I can't, well, I can imagine you being on the receiving end, but not the giving end. I can't. Well, totally. Well, you know, it's like, I mean, I think all of us have, uh, have the, the full range of human experience no matter how much light we shine in for myself certainly um, I feel like it's 
being able to know my, my shadow, being able to come to terms with that has actually allowed me to shine more brightly and be a fuller, or not fuller, but um, to, experience, to express myself in a more full um, way as a human being, you know? So, um, and definitely I received a lot of that too, uh, more than I gave it, but there were of course moments where, you know, I, I in my past where I, where I did, did express myself in that way and look back of course and wishing I had it. But, um, so our words, you know, and it's not just our words themselves, but the energy behind our words, the vibration, literally the tone of a voice, right? And how you can experience something like a mother who, you know, can bring her voice so soft and sweet and can feel so comforting and safe. And at the same time, that same voice, Gabriel, like, right. you know, <laughs> hips in the back of your neck go up. You're like, whoa. Oh, yes. I am, I am oh so familiar thing. with that one. Yes. But it was more of the father, not the mother. Yes. I am so familiar with that. Well, it's so awesome that you talk about that. And I know that you do free your voice sessions which sound absolutely incredible, heart-opening, soul-filling. I Sign me up. It's the tone of your voice, as you talked about, is uniquely designed just for you. And I've heard about this kind of therapy being done before. So what do you mean by that? Do you mean like, like you were saying, the mother telling you to do something, either in a soothing motherly voice or the harsh, um, didactic, whatever, tone, dictatorial tone, it's better, do you mean that you're helping people like say their own positive affirmations with their own voice so that they program, reprogram themselves? Is that what you do? Yeah, you're definitely on, on, on track with what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> I've heard, I've heard yeah. about that, yeah. You're definitely, yeah, you're, you're warm. Because uh, I'd rather have the uh, like British or South African soothing grandmother voice to reprogram me. I don't really want my own valley girl voice. So... <laughs> Yeah, well, no, yeah. that's great that you, you mentioned that. I mean, really, it's it's helping people find their voice. I love that. That's the main thing, and you know, and that looks like a lot of times, as much as we would like our voice to be a certain way or to sound a certain way, not that we can't, you know, um, access that place in ourselves where we can train or we can work through whatever we want to to get to that place. But it's about really meeting ourselves where we're at. It's about learning how to tap into what's really genuine, what's really there. Even if we have a shrill voice or a very soft voice and we wish we were louder, well, why do we have a shrill and soft voice? There's a story literally in our voice and in the way we express ourselves. And so many of us, you know, since an early age have been shut down, um, have been cut off from expressing ourselves, from being heard in the world, from being able to speak up, you know, being told, no, that's wrong. Don't say that, you know, don't, and so, and, and we're also, you know, of course, in society and whatnot, all these different conditions that kind of eventually we, we feel like we're suffocating. So to be able to find your voice, the way that the way that we do that is we just meet ourselves where we're at. We let the voice reveal what there is to see and, and, and to show about ourselves. And from there, guiding people through, through some breath work, through some meditation, through even somatic movement, you know, using, including the whole body as this human instrument, as I like to, to call it, um, to tune it back into itself, you know, or to be in tune again when we've gotten so out of tune with ourselves and with life. Definitely. And, and yeah, and, and essentially just seeing what unfolds from there. You know, a lot of what happens is through the intelligence of your own system, meaning your own nervous system, your body, and whatever's stored inside of there. Because we literally carry our trauma, our wounds, our everything in our body. It lives in our mind and our body, of course, but they're interconnected, right? So for your voice session, that's kind of the gist of it. And um, I'm glad you brought that up. So, Oh, no, it sounds absolutely incredible. And when I worked with you during that horrible time, I haven't lived in the same city as you since about then for eight years. But when I did have that session with you, and I've had other healing work done, tons of other healing work done, been to the therapy, the groups, uh, the massages. I mean, there was something different. And I've even had other sound healing work done on myself. And what you did, and it's, it, is, it is sound, but for some reason, I felt that you were so intuitive. Like, you knew 
exactly how hard to blow the didgeridoo or how hard to play the gong or how hard to spin the crystal bowls. You knew exactly what to do that where I needed to release. It was unbelievable. I've never in my life experienced something like that ever. And I really feel that is why I do call you a sound healer. It's not just that you're doing sound therapy. I, you know, I would have said that you are, I feel from my experience with you that you are a sound healer because you intuit what that person needs, like due to the work you're, you've done on yourself and constantly do meditation, yoga, you're connected every day. So therefore you can tap into someone else's field and you just knew like what frequency my heart needed to heal. And you really did. And so I feel that your, your beautiful intuition and, and, um, intention to heal the world, you really do want to heal people. And cause you know what it's like to be in the dark. And I've talked to you about this, so I'm speaking for you here, but I know that your intention and your intuition together make you such a powerful conduit to help us heal ourselves. I won't put the pressure on you. I won't call you a healer, but that's what I feel you are. But I really think a true healer is somebody who helps another person tap into their own power. So, you know, I mean, whatever, it's so powerful. Whatever you do, I, I can't even, I don't even know what it is. It's magic. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, um, you know, the uh, first thing I'll say is that I'm a student of life, just like you are a student of life. And um, I, I love learning. I love growing. And that doesn't always look like, you know, rainbows and um, unicorn farts and stuff. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's like the the grit, the shit, the, you know, and then being able to compost it, being able to grow something beautiful out of it, transform it, and and being willing to face yourselves like we've already, you know, kind of talked about in both the dark and the light and everything in between, um, and just, you know, seeing how, how I personally feel like I can absorb from different experiences in my life, whether it's some stranger on, on the street or a little kid or you know, a tree that I see in nature or a song that I hear. Like there's so many different ways of learning and experiencing life that, um, that I feel I'm just had so many different experiences, um, that have led me deeper into myself and also a deeper trust in what's already there or how to, like you say, you know, in a sense of intuition, which is true. Like I do have a very strong sense of intuition. I'm a very empathic person, you know, ever yes. since I was a kid, just how, you know, how I came into this world at the same time, we all have these access to these things inside of ourselves, right? So for me, a big part of it is coming from a place of service, coming from a place of wanting to um, really help people and also getting out of my own way. So to whatever degree, you know, I'm in my head about it, I find that the more I can connect with my breath, connect for me, I call it spirit, you know, there's whatever word you want to use for it, the universe energy, that, that source of, of energy where you can feel it's, it's larger than, uh, you know, life itself or your own personality. When you can really connect into, tap into that source of energy, um, amazing things happen. Amen. So, Amen, my brother. God spoke the world into existence. And God spoke. That was the first quoted line of the Bible of the Torah, if you believe that. It's pretty much the same story in every holy text. God spoke and so it was. Really, uh, those vibrations can create a world of unicorn farts and rainbows if you speak it. But, you know, on, on you know, a soprano can, can sing such a high note that it, a window breaks. Um, you know, I, I heard that ex-skinheads get their new recruits by touring them around the neighborhood and blasting heavy metal in their car. That's how they take vulnerable, young, lost kids and turn them into neo-Nazi, hateful, angry beings that would kill and maim is by just sound. And, and literally, like, that's what they say when they're interviewed and they say, how did you get all these recruits? Heavy metal. I mean, I, you know, there's some really good heavy metal out there especially the symphonies that play Metallica, but 
I mean, that's not that heavy. But yeah, that I mean, really, like, I think of that all the time. And that's why I'm not, I'm, it is a miracle what you did for me and what we did together, thanks to you. But it's not surprising to me that sound is so powerful in this dimension. Like, it's talked about in every holy text. God spoke and created the world. The word created the world. And it can also destroy, like you were talking about, words can really hurt somebody, devastate somebody's heart. Can, can, ha, ha, somebody could commit suicide after words, you know? It happens every day. So, yeah, words, sound, it, it, helping, harming, use it for good, and that's what you're doing, getting us to the bliss in life. Thank God for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one thing I, I'll say is, you know, it's interesting, like you mentioned heavy metal and like just in this example, skinheads going around and blasting that out of their cars or, you know, when I was in, in high school, when I was, I was really, li I was listening to a lot of um, gangster rap, you know, and hip hop. And there were some things in there that, um, believe it or not, actually helped me through some hard times, even as harsh and derogatory and like, you know, as the lyrics or the, the sounds were that were coming out of that music, it got me through something. And so it's interesting because the way I, the way I see it is, you know, you'd be surprised, like, it's not always as it, as it appears. And the more that I've been working with people, like, you know, sometimes soothing and beautiful sounds are great. Um, there's other times where I've literally, like, I won't call it a shouting match with, with, with the person I've worked with, but getting into the, what I call the animal body. It's like the very primal um, animal part of ourselves that sometimes wants to, like, feels like it wants to tear somebody's head apart or it wants to just go after, you know, or it wants to just release some really, really intense emotion. And so meeting that kind of frequency uh, with a sound or with that almost like, you know, <clears throat> that really intense metallic or gangster rap, whatever it is, can actually be very healing for somebody if that's where they're at in themselves. Where on the same side of this, or on you know, the other end of the spectrum, like someone who all they just need is just some like very soothing, soft, heartfelt sounds can be the perfect antidote for them. So, you know, I, I feel like I've really expanded on what I at least thought was the right sound or the wrong sound. I like I just I don't even go there anymore. I just you know it's like about well, depending on where the person's at and where they're they are in themselves, or where they're closed off to, or where they're open. Again, it's it's finding that that sound or that way of um, expression that they can relate to, right? So right, love so that's, that. Yeah. That's so beautiful, and that just brings me back to intention and intuition. You intuit what the people need, and it's the intention behind it. The gangster rap music that I also grew up on, the intention behind it was freedom and freedom of speech and. This is what's going on in our community. This is why we want to shout this out. We want to be empowered as people and not be second-class citizens. So really, the intention behind some of this gangster rap is empowerment, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to say, listen, I haven't compared it to gangster rap because I love gangster rap. But I will say, when I listen to, say, Britney Spears or, let's say, Beyonce's new Lemonade album and watch the videos, too... And then that's lower chakra time. I like feel it. I'm a lower chakra all the way, animal, animal all the way. And then I switch over to some Gabriel Logan Braun. It is higher chakra for me. Like it is night and day. I mean, truly like how I feel, fight or flight mode, animal, like lower chakra, like, you know, sex instead of making love. I mean, it's like totally different the way I feel in my body. And my soul, I, I feel it, you know, I'm sensitive I, I, to it now. I, I definitely lead from my heart and that's what I, I believe you're feeling. Um, for me, it's a real, it's a real, I feel like, a, you know, almost like devotional practice, uh, just a, a way of li living life, like a, a committed practice. Let's just say that of like the more I can stay connected to my heart and stay open even through challenging situations, you know, and at the same time protect myself. And there are moments where, you know, you gotta you gotta go down into your lower chakras. You gotta go higher and connect with 
with something beyond just your, your mind or your heart, but in general, yes, um, there's something about the medicine that comes from the heart and that soulfulness. And, you know, ultimately for me, I, I, uh, I'm really, really dedicated to helping people love themselves and love each other more. And we already, you know, we have, we have way too much or we've already got enough hatred in the world. We don't need to spread more of that, you know? So, Amen, babe. Amen. So I appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for radiating your beautiful soul through your music and healing offerings. You're so amazing. Yes, sound healing for a broken world. Sound healing for a world. But, no, you're, you're so incredible. You, sound healing for a broken world, healing for a broken heart. I know you do find your own voice lessons and you and living in balance, living life in balance. That is another thing and you just touched on it. How do you stay grounded, balanced? How do you get back to homeostasis when someone pisses you off? How how do you do it? What's I know what I do, I go to you <laughs> to to help me. But what do you do? Well, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, oh, I hope you have practitioners that get you back there or songs that you can reach out to or meditation practice or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just teasing. Um, <laughs> so, well, um, the, you know, one of the first things is you can, you know, you can have an open heart, but you know, I used to, I used to believe, or I used to tell myself, just follow your heart. I don't say that anymore. And the reason is because a lot of times our emotions are tied to our heart. And if we just follow our emotions without using the, you know, the ration of our, the rationality of our mind or being guided with all parts of ourselves, it can actually lead us astray. Um, at the same time, it's a beautiful thing to follow your intuition to follow what's really true for you, what you feel in your heart. So, again, to kind of paint a bigger picture and not get caught in this way or that way, for me, it's it's like, hey, there's times where if someone says something and it pisses me off, um, I'll do my best to respond and not react impulsively. Love it. And when I respond, I might actually meet them with what would seem like a, uh, like reacting or it might seem like a bit firmer or stronger voice or tone yet coming from a place of respecting myself and saying hey this isn't cool it's it's basically about look if you honor and you respect and you love yourself then you have to stand up for what doesn't sit well with you or what isn't right and then there's times where you know you, you have to stand your ground and other times where you just you just move along and you don't you don't fight back or you don't you know you don't respond back um there's this martial arts called aikido like judo you know and yeah. essentially the opponent um will use or the uh the master will use his opponent's force so if the opponent is throwing a kick or a punch he'll basically grab a hold of his arm or leg and he'll sweep him through so he's not actually even fighting back so that's another kind of tactic or way of dealing with it. But again, you know, it's, I think the main thing is for me personally, just having a really strong sense of who I am in myself and in the world, knowing how to set clear boundaries with people and being able to keep breathing and opening up my heart and feeling my feet on the ground, you know, knock on wood, right? Love it, babe. Love it. That is beautiful. You are truly living life in balance and that is why you are a life coach and I know that you have helped me and so many others, including those in rehab, which is a very big demographic of people who really need to get their feet back on the ground and get back into balance after being so off track from drugs and addictions. So, I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about that, how you're, what you've learned about living in balance has helped so many people, especially in the rehab community? Yeah. Um, well, I, I feel like one of the main main things is you know it's it's kind of no different than people who are in re not in rehab too, but especially when you're when you have the chemical addiction to a drug, it becomes that much harder. You have a more addictive personality, it can become that much harder. But the main thing is a lack of connection to ourselves and to life, a, a lack of purpose, a, a, a lack of direction. 
you know, um, when you line up with your purpose and, and where you're going, where you're headed, and you also have the support you need in yourself and with other people, you're on your way. And so many of the people that I see and that I work with to this day in rehab, they're missing one or all three of those things that I just mentioned. So it's so much easier, right? I mean, especially if you're in an environment too, think about it. Like if you're in an environment where people are just, you know, popping pills right and left, and then that's the easiest thing. Oh, you're gonna feel good, great. You don't have to deal with that pain. You don't have to go through it, you know? And it's just a band-aid, right? It's all just on the surface. It's a it's a quick fix. And that's also kind of why you see a lot of this happening now in our world, because there's so much instant gratification, quick fixes, you know, just do this and you'll have that. Yep. And at the same time, it's about helping uh, helping helping people learn how to slow down enough that they can actually feel again. They can actually feel. Like, even working with you and like what, what we've worked on before, you know, and, and just in general, helping someone heal a broken heart, a lot of that is going through the pain, going through the grief, and letting yourself be in a safe enough space where you can you can let it out. You can You can just let go, you know? So, in terms of helping um, whether it's a person who's an addict or just someone in everyday life find balance a lot of times too it's it's finding that sense of purpose direction and support around you connection with yourself and knowing but then also how do you function in your day-to-day -day practical life so there's the freedom of having an open heart and you know connecting with where, where you're connected but there's also the structure and the container that is so important to be able to function in everyday life because without that, there's, you know, a lot of people I see too, they, they just recently retired or again, if they don't have that direction or they don't have something to, to, you know, keep them focused, then things can get out of hand. So, so true. that's a big part of it too. It's, it's, it's both the structure and also having the connection, the freedom to do is, is what we to do. Oh my God, I'm so grateful that the rehab world has you. That is, you are so amazing. Words of wisdom, my sage. That is so profound. I need to meditate on all of that. Well, in terms of what you were saying, having a structure and having someone to, to talk to and be with and do the dance of life with, like community, do you, have you formed a community of, seekers and people who want to live a higher vibe life. I know that you, you built a community sanctuary called the Continuum Studio, right? Recently? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually build it, oh. but it's my new home where I do regular events now. Oh my God. I mean, that is so important because especially, I mean, just when you were talking about people coming out of rehab and trying to like build their life again, trying to find balance, in a chaotic world without suppressing their pain with a pill like where can they find that community that balance what is what is the community continuum studio is that our village that we've been looking for I would say yes it's definitely one of many places that exist um, and, and growing, growing number of places that are that are opening their doors to everybody including people who are you know wanting to stay sober or just find a deeper sense of support and connection with other people who have gone through similar things or are also just wanting more health and well-being in their lives. So the Continuum Studio was founded by Emily Conrad, who is the founder of Continuum Movement. Oh, cool. And it is, it is basically a movement-based practice nice. to help us connect to our nervous system and our fluid system, um, meaning our, you know, our blood, our, we're mostly made of water. It's like imagining that we almost like came out of the water onto uh, into onto the earth, and now we're we're connecting to that that fluid system, also the cerebral spinal fluid. So anyway, without going into more detail about that, she essentially founded this center. Now they have all kinds of different movement classes and some yoga classes, and now every Friday night, some kind of sound healing offering that I'm now a part of, Yay. and this is a and it's open to anybody who wants to come in and basically have an experience in which they can find a deeper sense of connection with themselves and the people that are there together. 
Honey, I love that. Why did I move out of LA before this was opened? What am I thinking? I'll come, come visit. visit. Yeah, I'll come visit. I'm like, it's just a plane right away. I'll get miles. Oh my, a little radiation never hurt anybody. I've got my, my EMF harmonizer. That's so incredible. I'm so proud of you. You're just, thank God, because really people are lost and, and, and putting band-aids over issues that need to just be sound healed their way out and, and overcome. So I'm so grateful that a place like the Continuum Studio exists. Can people just Google that? Yeah, they can amazing, Google it. Amazing, uh, amazing. Yeah, Facebook too. Yeah. Okay, well, actually, I'd love to tell people how they can find you and everything that you offer. And actually, do you, so it's just the sound, just sound healing, life coaching. Um, yeah. Music. What, music. what else? Well, yeah, so essentially, I'm doing two regular sound healing events at the Continuum Studio in Santa Monica, California, twice a month. Um, the first one is called Sonic Boom, a Sound Healing Journey, and that is all about just receiving, relaxing, letting go from your busy work week, coming to nourish yourself, Yay. and to move and through, through whatever you need to move through and heal. That's what that's for, and that's the second Friday of each month at Continuum Studio. Now, the fourth Friday, second offering, it's called the Human Instrument Celebration Play Shop. Not workshop, play shop. Nice. <laughs> Love it. And that is a, an interactive workshop or play shop experience in which you get to play, have fun and, and with, each, with yourself and in groups and partners, learning how to tap into the power of sound through your raw energy and actually use um, sound as a way to heal your own body and express and communicate. It's like a free your voice session, but in a play shop, essentially. Wow. Okay, I'll come in. Yeah. Flying and, in. And so those are the main two things um, that I'm doing every month consistently. And then in addition to that, I'm working on a recording project right now. The song I just sang that's in the studio, um, getting its uh, last little, you know, edits and, and whatnot. Yay. I also have a live, my first live sound healing album. Um, gonna be released this year. I don't know when yet, so I don't want to give a date, but that's happening, which I'm really excited about. Um, and and yeah, and I'm you know I do um, I've started doing little mini tours on the West Coast right now, and I'm really looking for more ways in which I can expand what I do and share more of these sound healing vibrations with the world. You're so beautiful, Angel. Okay, well, I'll keep my ears to the ground. You know that. Well, how can people find you for a session? I mean, GabrielLoganBraun.com. Exactly. Um, also on social media, on Facebook, they can reach out to me. Um, I'm on, you know, all the social media stuff, uh, Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube, all of it. So, yeah, just, you know, Gabriel Logan Braun or Gabriel at GabrielLoganBraun.com. You can email me. Um, and also, in addition to the Free Your Voice sessions, I do life coaching sessions too, which also incorporate a lot of the sound, uh, sound healing, breath work, movement practices, with the emphasis on how to create a, um, a healthy, balanced life and live your purpose and do what you're here to do, because this is it. <laughs> Why That's wait? That's right. This is it in this body this time around, so honey, get it right. Stop getting it twisted. Truly, get a session with Gabriel. It will blow your mind. It will transform your life. He helped me heal from a very dark, horribly painful place. You are incredible. I am I hope people get sessions with you. Please, in the comments below, after you get a session with Gabriel, let us all know how it went. And guess what, everybody? Now you know how incredible this man is, and you are going to hear firsthand some healing out of how many instruments are you going to play for us right now? I'm going to play three different instruments. My voice and something called the didgeridoo and something called the Bansuri flute, which comes from India, East India. Wow. So, and that's all um, being woven together 
through what's called a loop station or loop pedals, where you can record the music live and then build and layer it to create what I call a soundscape of beautiful melodies, music, rhythms, all kinds of amazing things. So. Oh my gosh, this is coming at us live right now. I am so excited. Gabriel, we are, you're just so fabulous. You are a master and a majesty. Thank you so much. So this is pretty much my, I'm going to be here basking in the glow. But yeah, this is our send off. Gabriel's going to heal us out of this beautiful interview. So thank you for being here and listen up. Thank you. Yes, Angel. Everybody. I can't Perfect. wait. I'm in it. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let the healing begin. Let the recalibration begin. Recalibrate the nervous system. Relax. Peace in the heart. Namaste.